Hi, my name is Glory and I'm a second year architecture student studying at the Bartlett School of Architecture. So today I'll be sharing what I wish I knew when I was in my first year of architecture school, which is what materials I needed for my first year. So keep in mind that different architecture schools have different teaching methods. And for me personally, it was very much about hand drawings of the first year of the Bartlett. And some architecture schools might be more focused on computing or digital softwares. So just keep that in mind. And with that being said, let's go. So the first section we have is the must-haves category. So the first part we have pencils. And I think anyone who's doing architecture must have had some sort of drawing background before they entered and must have a certain knowledge of how pencils work. So I think it'll be really nice if you have a range of different pencil hardnesses. So these help with creating different line thicknesses in your drawing and builds more variety. So the second thing we have is fine liners. So apart from using pencils, you'll also be using a lot of fine liners as they're the basis of a lot of drawings and also what I use to draw in my sketchbooks. Again, keep a range, but I personally use 01, 03, and 05 to get the range of line thicknesses that I want. So Uni is my brand of choice, but again, play around with the different fine liners and see which one you prefer depending on your likes and your budget as well. So the third one is set squares and T-squares. So set squares and T-squares will be your lifesavers when it comes to drawing perpendicular lines on a drawing. The best way to use this is lining them up with the edge of your piece of paper, and then you will get straight lines. The fourth one I have for you is big metal rulers. So because I have such tiny hands, most of the time I use a very tiny metal ruler, but in certain occasions when you're doing very large drawings or you're measuring the distances, or a large piece of drawing with the scale, it might be very handy to have a large metal ruler so you don't have to keep doing sections using a smaller ruler. If you want, you can also invest in a tape measure for site surveying too. Next, we have scale rulers. This is a must have because all of your drawings you do will be scaled. So as depicted from the name, a scaled ruler is used for doing scaled drawings. Here's a mini tutorial on how to use scale rulers. So on each side, there's a scale and the number one on each scale means one meter and it shows how long one meter is for that scale. You can also scale the scales to your liking, such as scaling one to 500 to one to 50. And so the scale is bigger and then you read 10 meters as one meter. Next up, we have masking tape. So this is also a must have because masking tape is used for almost anything you can think of, like sticking to drawings when you have crit and making models and other things that just require non-glue and non-sticky adhesives. It's just very useful. And this will be the number one thing that you see most architecture students carrying around. Next, we have tracing paper. So this is also very important because tracing paper will be used to trace over any drawings and images you have to develop ideas you have for a project. So there are two types of tracing paper. The first one is in a roll form where it's mostly for sketching over drawings or images you have and these are for sketching purposes. So the one I have right now is yellow. I used to have a white one but the color doesn't really matter because they serve the same purpose. The second type of tracing paper is in a sheet form. So you get these in maybe an A3 pad or maybe you can buy them loose in A2 or A1 in a store. So these are for more formal drawings if you want to do your drawing or your scale drawing on a piece of trace paper. Next we have Yoohoo. So this is my favorite favorite type of glue for model making. So it dries very quickly, but it still gives you that time frame for you to move pieces around if you're not happy with the positions that your pieces are in. And it's just very universal and it can almost work on any material that you can think of, like wood, cardboard, fabrics, plastic, almost everything you can think of. Just don't use it on foam or foam board because it will corrode it and the foam will just disappear. But Yoohoo is seriously my favorite, so please get your own too. So we also have more model making materials. So here I have a cutting mat that's in A3 size and also this scalpel. Sorry, it's a bit rusty. So these can be used to cut card for model making and also just very handy for cutting up materials. And then another honorable mention are these blending stumps, which are used to blend different pencil shadings together to create a nice shading on your drawings. Next, let's talk about sketchbooks. It really doesn't matter what type of sketchbook you have as long as you can draw in them and develop your ideas. So mine is in an A5 size and in landscape form. I don't know why I picked landscape form, but it's just what I stuck with. But portrait works perfectly fine too. In fact, it might be more compact because it opens like this instead of like 
that which might take up more space. So you can also go for a bigger or smaller size than A5, but personally, this is what I think works well for me because I think the size is very convenient to work with and also just very easy to carry around with you when you're doing field trips or site surveying. You can also pick a sketchbook depending on your budget. So I'm personally very happy with the one I have. It's around eight pounds because most sketchbook can easily exceed 10 pounds already. And it's able to do watercolor and other fine liner stuff that you normally do in a sketchbook which is very nice. So I'll leave the link of my sketchbook below and you can check it out if you're interested. The next thing is a portfolio case. And personally, this is also depending on how much drawings and what size drawings you're gonna be doing. So personally, I have an A1 and an A2. So A1 would be for more final drawings that are much bigger, and A2, I would just use them to keep the development drawings that I have with me throughout all the time. Pick depending on your budget as well and look for cheap ones online and you can also just purchase them from your seniors which would probably give it to you at a cheaper price so just keep that option in mind next we have the category of could haves so these are the stuff that might be useful if you have them but it's not really a big deal if you don't have them too so the first one i have for you is drawing boards so these are the drawing boards that are like a1 size and are super massive and you can put your drawings on them and then draw them at a perpendicular scale because it has a ruler that moves up and down that's parallel to the piece of paper you have. So the tutors in my first year recommended us getting this drawing board, but personally, I just didn't get it because A, I didn't want to spend any more money than I was, and two, I since I was an overseas student, I thought it would be very difficult if I were to come home and be holding such a big tool so i just didn't invest in one and personally i think it worked out for me because i just used set squares to make sure that my lines on my drawing were perpendicular by putting it on a table and then lining it up with the set squares so the next thing i have for you is a curved ruler so these things are very fiddly but quite nice if you're doing a lot of curves on your drawing the only downside to these is there's no way of accurately measuring the curves and it's very up to your own hands to bend them at any curve you want which can also be quite useful so again this depends on the curve and for me i didn't buy this when i first went into architecture school i only bought it at a time when i needed to draw a lot of curves and then it was helpful to me at that time next we have circle templates so circle templates are not really necessary but it's a quite a useful tool if you're doing a bit of curves and needs to be part of a circle and also if your drawings just have a lot of circles to be honest again i didn't buy this in my first year, but I got it at a time that I needed to draw more circles than I needed to, so it was quite handy. So again, you don't have to purchase this right at the beginning. The third one I have for you is a compass. So I would assume that before you enter architecture school, uh, most students would have a compass with them already and know how to use one. You can technically borrow this from some of your course mates, but it's just nice to have your own one and might be handy when you're doing large circles on a drawing. So the third category I have for you is not needed, but fun to have. So these are tools that you probably don't need, but it's just nice if you have them. It's quite fun and it can be quite useful. So the first tool I have for you in this category is an electric eraser. So it sounds very fancy and unnecessary, but after I bought one because I saw one of my friends using it, I thought it was the most useful thing ever because it has such a tiny tip. So it's able to erase areas in your drawing that a large eraser would not be able to erase because it's so big and it would erase everything in that area. So it's quite a good investment if this is something you're interested in. The last one is a clutch pencil. So I bought this because my tutor in first year used a clutch pencil and I thought it looked quite nice. So I bought one and the lead I use is 4H so it's very light. So I use this to do light sketching in my sketchbooks and also as a draft on some of my drawings and later on I go over the lines with a thicker pencil. So that's how I use my clutch pencils. There's a ton of videos online that talks about clutch pencils in detail, so if you're interested you can also go watch those. So now we've come to the category of tech materials and I'm talking anything that's electronic. So the first thing, let's talk about computers. So in terms of computers, because again, like I said, the first year for Bartlett is very analog and hand drawing. So I didn't use my computer that much for digital softwares or um, technical drawings, anything like that. So I use a MacBook Pro 
And personally, I think any other laptop would work perfectly fine. I see a lot of people using Windows. And I think in first year, because we didn't need to do any of those technical stuff, so mostly computers were used for editing drawings or editing photos in Photoshop and also just editing videos or films that you might use as research to present. And I think that was enough for first year. So let's move on to iPads. So I had an iPad as well, but personally, I didn't think it was that necessary for first years because a lot of the stuff can be done on your computer already. And the only reason I could justify using an iPad is if you have a stylus, like an Apple Pencil or a stylus for any other tablet, which would be quite useful if you're making digital pieces that require a stylus. And this could help in doing digital drawings or, you know, photoshopping stuff on the iPad. And that could be quite handy for Design Studio. But in terms of other things, I don't really see a reason to justify using the iPad. However, for other modules, that might require note taking, I think an iPad is a good investment. But again, this also depends on your preference and your budget. So that's it for the video. Thank you for stopping by and taking time out of your day to watch my videos. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe if this is something you'd like to see in the future. Thank you.